welcome to my channel. I am your girl, Carmel Jean-Francois, out of the New York City area, owner and founder of C-Fit Coaching. What are we talking about today? We're talking about running. We're talking about getting started with running. So whether you're a fresh, brand new runner, or you're coming back from an injury, or maybe you just took some time off, time off. Whatever the situation is, we're here to make sure that we get started on the right foot, pun intended. <laughs> What we want to do is we want to gradually get into this so we can build up our strength and avoid any risk of injury. So important. So I'm here to share some tips with you. So stay tuned. We're going to talk about some tips on getting started with running. The first tip I want to give you is get your medical clearance. Speak to your doctor. So many people out there are sedentary and they decide to put on a pair of sneakers and go run and they might hurt themselves so you definitely want to avoid injury with with regards to that that's number one another reason is especially if you are back from an injury or you have any type of medical condition you definitely want to hear what your physician has to say about it again they might be able to give you guidelines and precautions because most doctors will say yeah go for it but you just want to definitely make sure that you do have that clearance to start a running routine. The next tip that I would like to offer you is invest in a good pair of sneakers. Sneakers are so important. Some people need more support in the foot than others, but it would be a good thing for you to go check. Some sneaker stores offer a service where they actually watch your gait and they know whether you pronate or supinate. And that just means which direction your foot tends to go in as you walk or run. And they'll be able to offer you the sneakers that offer you the most support so that the rest of your joints are all supported. Your ankles, your knees, your hips are all supported while you run. So important. So check that out for sure. And the next thing I would like to offer you is stay safe. Now that's twofold. One way is to stay safe if you're running when it's a little darker out. Make sure you're wearing bright colors so people can see you. Make sure that you let people know. If you're running by yourself, make sure you let the folks around you know where you'll be and whatever route you have. Some of these devices, these apps that track your, that track your course or your route, they also offer real time for other people that are following you. I used to tell my sister, hey listen, take me. Take a look at this app and you'll see exactly where I am on my route. So that's one way. Um, if you're listening with headphones, just don't blare them too loudly in your ears so that you want to you wanna be able to hear and be cognizant of what's happening around you as you run. Because I know for me, it's easy for me to get lost in my run and then I'm not aware of anything that's around me. If you are in a safe environment and if it's nice and bright out, then that's something that you could just allow to happen. But if it's a little darker or maybe not so many people are, are around or maybe it's just not as safe as the neighborhood as you would want it to be, then you definitely want to either leave the headphones, earphones, earplugs, whatever you want to call them at home and definitely pay more attention or, you know, lower the volume and pay more attention to what's going around you. The other thing I would like to offer as far as stay safe is injury prevention. <laughs> Injury prevention. So you want to warm up before you go out for your run. You want to make sure that the blood is flowing, that the blood is warm, so that you don't go out too quickly and, again, risk injury. So definitely make sure that that happens. And when you're done with the run, a, a stretch and some calming exercises will help. Breathing will always help as you just kind of like lower the heart rate and lower the intensity of your workout so that the body really comes back into um, a natural state. And during your runs, you might want to carry water with you for hydration. Make sure that you're not overheating, especially in the summer. And you want to make sure that you have identification on you when you run. God forbid anything happens you should be easily identifiable. So definitely carry your identification with you. And one last thing that I would like to offer you, when you are running in the street, you wanna run against traffic, side of the road, of course, and against traffic. You wanna see what's coming in your direction. You heard me say earlier, conversational pace. Well, it's exactly like I said. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's being able to carry on conversation as you run. 
But what I would like to offer you is RPE, rate of perceived exertion. And what that means is the perceived exertion, my perceived exertion, as far as my running is concerned. It, RPE will be different from every individual. My RPE could be very, very high on the scale if I'm running with somebody and I'm working hard to keep up with them and they're just kind of like strolling along because they are a more advanced runner. So RPEs go from a rate of zero to 10. Zero meaning I'm sitting on the couch and I'm really not exerting anything at all at the current moment. One to two is when you're taking a stroll. Very easy, no taxing, nothing. Um, three to four would be, I'm now moving and I'm definitely able to keep up a conversation the entire time, it's not even a second thought. Five to six is carrying on conversation, but I feel it, right? <laughs> I feel it, it's like every once in a while I'm taking a break and I'm talking, but I'm still carrying on this conversation. Seven to eight is, I can barely finish a sentence, maybe even a thought, right? Um, so seven to eight, I'm definitely building up my, my, my run. I'm a little bit out of breath, right? And I'm a little bit more focused on my run because it's like, I can't talk to you right now. Nine is, there's no conversation happening. I'm definitely focused on my run. I'm trying to um, save all my energy for my run, the inhaling and the exhaling. No conversation is happening at the RPE of nine. RPE of 10 is an all out sprint and that's all that can be taking place at that particular moment in time. So when you're thinking of how much you are exerting, think of your RPE, your rate of exceed, your rate of perceived exertion as you're running. Can I carry on a conversation right now? No, so you are at the seven, eight mark. All right, so just keep that in mind. It's just a tip. Thanks for joining me as we discuss running and getting started to run. I would love if you like, comment, subscribe, and share this channel out to the people that you know. It would mean everything to me. And join me back. We have two more parts in this series to go over in how to get started on running. So, see you then.